with worry, worry assumes that you know a lot more than you actually do. You don't know enough to worry. That's God's truth. You don't know enough to worry. Who are you to worry about anything? <laughs> get up, get up, everybody move! Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope all is well, at least for you, because we know right now, not all is well for all of our brothers and sisters and friends and family out here. But today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about something that is very common to everybody. First of all, I wanna to talk to you about something that's normal. I wanna make sure that you know when I get to talking about it that there's no judgment that I'm not placing judgment on anybody or saying that if you participate in this then you're somehow below your normal human being at all because everybody experiences it but at times like this where we have a illness pandemic and we have a bunch of control being put on um, your average citizen uh, you know and whatnot from the government, uh, people experience a lot of worry. And so I wanna to talk to you today about worry because worry is preposterous. Worry is something that many people seem to have the idea that when put into good use, it will bring some sort of change and or uh, bring more positivity into their life when it is the most opposite of what they think if they think that like if you think that worry is somehow going to bring more positivity or bring a better situation right change the situation that you're in in any way shape or form then you are thinking backwards um, first of all you know if you've been studying uh, the mind in any serious way. If you've been following this video series on YouTube, then you know we become what we think about. What you resist persists. Okay, so if you do not like something and you dwell on it, the only thing that you're going to get is more of that which you dwell on because we become what we think about. Right? So if you think about your worries and you dwell on what makes you angry or what makes you sad or what makes you scared in any way shape or form then what you're essentially doing is attracting more of that energy to you and expressing more of that energy out of yourself out of your own vessel and so my message to you guys today is don't worry like Bob Marley said don't worry because you know, when it comes to worrying, a lot of it has to do with our inability to let go, right? We don't want to let go of what we think should be the normal um, activity that we see. We don't want to let go of our bad habits. We don't want to let go of the image that we had in our mind of what the world is when we realize maybe that the world is a little more dark than we thought it was or has the potential to be. And so when we don't want to let go, what do we try to cling to? We try to cling to good emotions. We try to cling to happiness. We try and grasp it. But the only thing that happens when you try and grasp happiness, when you try and hold it and demand permanence of, of it or from it, from happiness, the only thing that happens is you find out exactly how to make yourself unhappy, which is by trying to demand some sort of permanence uh, from uh, happiness, from, from, from an emotion. Emotions are designed to enter into your body and then very soon leave. You're not, your, your human vessel, your body is not meant to hold emotions permanently. Imagine if you could only feel one way for your entire life. Whether it was happiness or not, that would not bring you 
real happiness that would not bring you real growth in any way shape or form okay so you need the entire emotional spectrum to even experience growth and real maturity so so you know first things first learn to let go do not try and cling to happiness do not try and hold it you know there was a uh, a, a, a story about a, a little girl I didn't know her but there was a little girl and, and somebody gave her a bunny rabbit and she immediately fell in love with this bunny rabbit she thought it was the cutest thing and she was so happy she even cried uh, tears of happiness when she got it but she was so in love with it and so worried about losing it she started to worry about what if it hops away what if this happens what if that happens what if I'm not what if it doesn't love me what if it doesn't know how much I love it she was so worried about her her new loved object right that in the car on the way home she squeezed it to death with love so learn to let go it's very 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 important that you learn the difference between holding too close to your own happiness and the thing that you are supposed to do which is lean on your truth and let that be um, you sort of let that be your happiness not an emotion not a feeling that you feel within your body but actual truth let truth you know the truth of change the truth of the unshakable unmovable laws of the universe cause and effect um, change as a constant as above so below as below so above these things uh, lean on your truth and let that be your happiness not the emotion of happiness not when things stay the same within your comfort zone and within how you think they should be learn to let go do not demand permanence of any situa life situation in your physical environment or any type of emotional field that you feel within your body. And you know, with worry, worry assumes, if you participate in worry, you are assuming that you know a lot more than you actually do. You don't know enough to worry. That's God's truth. You don't know enough to worry who are you to worry about anything <laughs> about anything within reason of course now I'm, I'm poking a little fun and I don't want you to take my words out of context okay but but that's that's the long short of it is you don't know enough to worry you assume that you know all of these factors and and everything about the future when you participate in consistent worrying okay so don't be in the habit of, of always worrying about things worry is the negative application of imagination and you know we've talked about imagination plenty of times in this video series your imagination is the most powerful manifestation tool known to man your your wonderful human imagination gives to you the ability to shape your own life your imagination gives to you the ability to shape your own life so if you shape it around what you're worried about then you're going to give yourself more and more things to worry about yet if you shape it around what you know to be true right and know that you have the ability to change your beliefs if you have beliefs that reflect um, reasons to be worried in your opinion then you can change those beliefs you have the power to use your imagination you don't have any limits with your imagination imagination is actually the channel through which God speaks to you or the supreme ruler of the universe whatever the name you like to call that your imagination is where that voice um, takes form for you okay when you have a vision for yourself in a way that you want to create 
something great, you get that inspiration in your imagination. You get it via a vision for yourself in the world. If you guys hear the motorcycle, very sorry. The birds, I'm sure you don't mind. And the wind, I can't help that. <laughs> um, anyway, your imagination is super duper powerful. I see that the, uh, the habit that we have is to sort of disregard time spent on exercising our imagination as simply recreation. We think that it's, it's fun to be creative with our imagination, but it's not really useful. That seems to be the habit, but I encourage you today to change that habit, to know that there is real power in your imagination, and to know that there is real power in learning how to properly use your imagination to shape and create your life into whatever you want it to be. Um, so that's that's all I have for you today. It is not time to worry. This situation is getting better and better every single day. And uh, please know that I am with you, that we all is with you, that um, you have the power to encourage yourself and you can be with you. You know, you can tell your less mature mind from your more mature mind that, hey, it, you know, I forgive you, self. I forgive you. And we're going to take some time to reprogram, uh, you know, to reprogram those, those nuts and bolts that make you so worried. And you can have your own back. So be encouraged. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Peace and love. So if you're new to Ufulu Child, make sure you subscribe to get more Mind Mastery content dropped straight into your YouTube feed. If you enjoyed today's episode of Get Your Mind Right, let me know by clicking that like button, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Peace and love.